Hi, I'm John Santiago, and this is a MATLAB example on amplitude demodulation. For questions on this video, visit me at http at freedomuniversity.tv. Again, http freedomuniversity.tv, or email me at john at e hyphen l-i-t-e-w-o-r-k-s dot com, or john at eliteworks.com. Okay, so what we have here is a demonstration of how do we get the message from an AM signal or AM demodulation. This example that I'll be showing is dealing with coherent detection or synchronous detection. Here I zero the constant because that's what it's used for. And in this technique you require exact phase of a carrier. But first let me show you the setup again. Here we have a carrier constant we have a message. Basically the constant moves the signal up or down. The constant is also known as a bias. We're going to multiply this message signal with this carrier okay, through this multiplier. And I have scopes to see what the outputs of each of these signals are coming, uh, that are coming out of the signal generators and from this modulator or product block. All right, so let me do a quick demo again run the simulation. So we'll take a look at the message block. So here we have a square wave with no bias so there's a negative one and a positive one around the zero axis. We have a carrier. Alright, that's shown right here at 20 Hertz. And then finally the output of this is shown right here but this is just a square wave so let me add and change the signal generator to a sine wave so it looks more clear run it and you can see here's my sine signal my message my carrier and then my double side band suppressed carrier AM all right, let me zero this out now and show you how we can recover this. Okay, so this is my transmitter. Now this is my receiver end. Okay, basically I go through another multiplier and a low pass filter one and low pass filter two in order to recover my message. Note that I'm using the exact same carrier to multiply my receive AM signal right here this receive signal is found at the output of this product and then we go through this low pass filters to recover our original message now if this carrier drifts this at the other end carrier drifts so it's almost like a long piece of wire going from the transmitter to the receiver however we have circuits called phase lock loops that when this carrier drifts its corresponding drifts occurs also in the receiver end so that's the setup for this synchronous or homodyne detection scheme. This is also known as coherent detection. And next I'll show you how all this works. Grab the diagrams of the receiver, which consists of a low pass filter of 5 Hz, which you can get from the continuous block in Simulink found here. And you can change the coefficients by double clicking on it right here and you can see that it's 2 times pi times 5 hertz so this gives you radiance per second so this is basically your Laplace transform fu uh, function when you put this in this block alright so let's run the simulation to see how we recover the signal okay again this is what's going into the antenna of this synchronous detector right here Okay, now coming out of the multiplier block is this signal right here. Okay, so we're then we're going to low pass filter. I'm not going to show you mathematically, that's at a later video, but just want to give you a conceptual of how we recover this AM signal. So this is what's coming out of the second multiplier or demodulator. And then here's the first low pass filter. Okay, a little bit of fuzziness here but when we add a second filter we can clean it up better so this is sort of like a second order low pass filter these are two filters are just identical and 
you can see this the same thing as the previous one okay and then we're going to take a look at our recovered message all right so that's our message right here coming out of our recovered block and we can compare it with our original message okay and you can see it's at the same frequency with a slightly lower amplitude and the lower ampli we can always use the amplifier to amplify this signal alright so it's just a scaled version of your original message and that's it for that synchronous detection for the sine wave we can change the message to a square wave alright and that's what we're gonna do change it to a square wave and you see a little bit of round off air so when I run the simulation again here you can see it coming out of the first low pass filter. Let me just zero out everything and we'll trace it through again. Okay, so here coming out of this product is this square wave. Coming out of the second product or modulator, second multiplier is this. Now we you see there's a little fuzziness so we're going to filter this out using this low pass filter. You can see there's a little bit of round off okay? because we note that in a square wave it contains uh, using the 10 percent rule uh, 9 to 11 harmonics to generate this square wave. But coming out of the second we can clean this up and you can see here's our square wave or recovered message and you can see it's a scaled version of the original message shown here so here's our original message and here's our scaled version a little bit of round off because the high frequencies got filtered off but you can modify the high pass fil low pass filter here in fact let's try that we'll change this to let's say we'll put 15 hertz, 2 pi times 15 hertz. Okay, let me cancel this because I want to do this again. Oops, I forgot to do the denominator so we can keep the gain as 1. Do the same thing for this. We should get a better round, more sharper edge. So again, it's coming out of the first low pass filter. This is what's coming inside output of the second modulator. So let's take a look at the output of the first filter, which is this again, and output of the second filter is right here, and you can see a little bit sharper. All right, but now we're letting in more frequencies, okay, of the fuzziness, so we can develop another filter, third order, by cascading another filter to get a sharper image. And you can see that there's the original square wave and our recovered message. By adding another filter, you can. Um, we get a much cleaner signal because we added a high, a high frequencies to this. All right, so you can see the trade-off between getting a sharper edge and letting in the other higher frequencies associated with the detection scheme. Okay, so hopefully this gives you understanding of what homodyne synchronous and coherent detection is all about.